What's up, everybody? This is Elder Stacy Zanders. We're going to be taking a look in this segment in Romans chapter number 14. We're going to deal with maybe about the verses one through four. Um, I had a question about judging other people, and I'm going to be reading this. I'm going to be um, sharing my screen with you here. Um, kind of look at this. I'm going to be reading this from the Message Bible because I find that it's easier. You have to break the word down to where it's extremely palatable for people to receive it um, so that they can grow in the knowledge of God. But this is about passing judgment, about people, church pe being critical, being judgmental, and don't fully understand what they're doing. But let's take a look at here at this scripture. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. In um, Romans chapter 14, verse number one, this is again, if you're going to follow along from the Message Bible, he says, welcome with open arms, fellow believers who don't see things the way you do. And don't jump all over them every time they do or say something you don't agree with. Even when it seems as um, seems that they are strong on opinions, but weak in the faith department. Remember, they have their own history to deal with. Treat them gently. All right. So Paul here, the writer here, is telling us to welcome, first of all, if anybody, let me say this, if anybody, this is what puts you into the kingdom of God. If anybody names the name of Jesus Christ, what essentially puts you into the kingdom is uh, repentance of your sins, water baptism um, in Jesus' name, uh, having the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues. That is the basis for putting you into the kingdom of God. If anyone comes and they have this basic requirement and they name the name of the Lord, they are in Christendom. They are in the kingdom. All right. But he says here, let's go back. Let's reiterate. He says, welcome with open arms, fellow believers who don't see things the way you do. And that is a big problem with a lot of people who judge people because you don't believe what I believe or think what I think. Now, let me tell you something. I'm not talking about erroneous uh, uh, thinking or teaching. I'm talking about believing in the doctrine of the Bible. What God says is true, but what puts you in the kingdom is those things that I afford mentioned. And then, but some people, they may not have, we are, you have like, um, you have different factions of the, uh, 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 Pentecostal, Apostolic, or Baptist, um, you have these different fat or denominations. Let me tell you, God doesn't have a denomination. God has a nomination. And I often tell people from my circle, I said, the Bible says those who are going to go up in a rapture are going to be from all people, kindreds, tongues, nations. And our circle is not everywhere around the globe. So that means there are people who are not a part of our denomination that is going to be raptured because God does not have a denomination. He has a nomination. All right. So Paul here says, he says, welcome with open arm people who don't see things the way you do and don't jump all over them just because they say or do something you don't necessarily agree with. Even when it seems like they have strong opinions, but they may be weak in the faith department, remember they have their own history. They have their own life. They have their own story. You don't know where people come from. You don't know what their experiences may or may not have been. We are all different in Christ. And he said, but treat them gently. For that, that goes for just anybody, whether they're in the kingdom or not in the kingdom. You treat people right with love and kindness. There was one case where Bible, Paul told um, some folks, he said, let me show you a more excellent way. You had some where Paul asked, unto what baptism was you baptized? They said unto John's. And he began to expound to them about Jesus. All right. So let's 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 move on here. It goes on here in the next verses two through four. I'm going to read this and then we'll talk about it. It says, for instance, a person who has been around for a while might well be convinced that they can't eat anything on the table, while another with a different background 
might assume he should only be a vegetarian and eat accordingly. But since both are guests at Christ's table, that's what's important, underscore that, at Jesus' table, he invited them, not you. Wouldn't it be terribly rude if they failed to criticizing what the other ate or didn't eat? God, after all, invited them both to the table. Do you have any business crossing people off the guest list or interfering with God's welcome? If there are corrections to be made or manners to be learned, God will handle that without your help. This is what I, I often tell people. This has come up to people to always talk about the quote unquote televangelist. Or, and I always tell people, say, first of all, God is not intimidated by anybody. God will bless you, grow, and allow your ministry to grow and expand all over the planet. And then God will turn around and say, depart from me, your works was of iniquity. I don't know you, or I don't even have, I don't have an intimate relationship with you. So if God is not intimidated by people, why are we intimidated by other people? We should not be intimidated by what other people have, what they're doing. You just, um, Worry about yourself. Make sure that you're in the faith. I was slipped my mind in scripture that Peter said that we ought to be um, um, fighting for ourselves, making sure that we are saved, making sure that we're in the faith. All right. He look, take a look at this. He says, some people may eat, think it's okay to eat all meat. Some people may think it's be a, to be rather be a, a vegetarian. He said, what difference does that make to you? Because it is not you who invited them or brought them into the kingdom. Jesus brought them into the kingdom. So it is terribly rude for you to be in the kingdom of God, criticizing a servant that does not belong to you. You need to mind your manners and be thankful and grateful and appreciative that you're at the master's table. That's essentially what he is saying. What the uh, King James Version said, who are you to judge another man's servant? To his master, he will stand or fall. So the, in the message Bible, it is saying that there's any manners to be learned, corrections to be made, God will make those corrections in the individual. Um, the Bible says, Paul says, so one water, one plant, but God gives the increase. Our job and don't and receive them not to doubtful disputes, uh, but we are to love one another, be kind and gentle and long suffering and patient with one another. But oftentimes, if somebody don't believe what we believe, oh, they wrong, they wrong, and I'm right, they wrong, and I'm right. <laughs> God is the only one ultimately who will make that decision. If somebody is weak in faith, pray for them, help them, admonish them, encourage them in the Lord, not criticize or judge them. Try to show them the error of their ways through the word of God. All right, let's go on here. Let's take a look at this. See if there's something else in here. He says that there are corrections to be made or manners to be learned. God can handle that without your help. I often tell people, you have people imposing, God has his word. Now you have um, communities of believers who feel it necessary to uh, incorporate traditions on top of the word of God. We already have the Jews in the Bible created over 600 traditions on top of God's word. And Jesus said, you're straining a, a net, flying through a net. You are making it hard for people to be saved. Peter said, we couldn't even keep all of these customs. So why would we put that added burden on the Gentiles? And you have in this modern time, people imposing traditions, rules, and regulations on people that is not in the word of God. God don't need your help. He says he created the end simultaneously at the beginning. So what God has in his word is his word. And if it's not a law, Paul said, where there is no law, there is no transgression. Leave it alone. Leave people alone. If it's not a sin, they have a liberty to do it. 
God would send you to hell. And I did this one time. It's a hundred, I say 152 things. I try to take out everything that basically repeats itself that you will go to hell for. Where there is no law, there is no transgression. There is no law in the word of God to say a woman cannot wear pants. I know he said, wear things that pertain unto a man, but guess what? Back in Jesus' day, Jesus looked like he was wearing a dress to me, but that was clothing that was pertaining unto a man. Um, and there were separate garments that were pertaining unto a woman. Jesus was wearing clothes made for men and women was wearing clothes that was made for women, even when it come to jeans. Be a man, go put on a pair of lady jeans because women are not built the way men are. Those clothes are designed for the form and shape to fit a woman, just like a man's is designed for him. All right. So we have to stop a lot of the cynicism and criticism of one another where we continue to be divided. Denomination has to do with separation. So there is a whole God's nomination. And then we went about denoming or, or fracturing or tearing denomination apart and start getting with one another based upon our uh, particular belief system. And um, if, if people have the basics of being in the kingdom, then they are in the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, I'm going to do the separation. He, Matthew 13, he says that he has some people, angels, specializers that will separate his harvest. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm in the faith, that I'm living up to the stature and the standard and the fullness of Jesus Christ. So I hope that helped you. It is not our, who are you to judge another man's servant? If someone is in the kingdom, you and, and, and in the kingdom of God, you have people on all various levels. Some are weak, some are strong, some are in between, but they are striving. They are striving to become. And our job at, in the fivefold ministry, he said he gave some apostles, evangelists, prophets, pastors, teachers for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry and the edifying of the body of Christ. Our job is to help everyone till we all come into the unity of the faith. And remember, you have a treasure inside your earthen vessel that that excellency and power may be of God and not of yourself. This is Elder Stacey Zanders. I hope that helped you. Um, in the meantime, as always, God bless you.